Welcome everybody. Welcome to Chaplet Monday. Happy Feast of St. Francis of Assisi today. And no, I, I mentioned this, but I, we're not praying his chaplet tonight, but we have prayed his chaplet before, and so you can find it. Um, that's why our kitty Toothless is in this video, in honor of St. Francis, patron saint of animals. Look at that sleepy kitty. So, pretty girl Toothless will be praying with us tonight, along with the other two that will probably be jumping around. Kit Kat's there, Snowball's over there. And then the kids are here. Hi. So tonight we are going to be talking about St. Faustina. Oh, Laura and Mike are here. Hello. That's so cool. Are y'all um, loving the family time after the wedding? So if you haven't already, you can download our prayer sheet on the website. It's on the homepage for St. Faustina. I think I might have put October 5th by accident. I might have said October 5th on the website, but it is for tonight. Um, and so St. Faustina's feast day is October 5th. So her feast day is tomorrow. And so if you look at our chaplet page, I've kind of redone the chaplet page. Well, I mean, I haven't moved anything around, but I've retitled all of them so that you see their feast day. So instead of the date that we prayed their chaplet, that's not very helpful. I mean, it's nice to see the progression, but it's more helpful to have their feast day. And um, so that you know when their special day is. And don't forget to pull the spoon out, Jay, and put a little paper towel on top so that you can pray it on their feast day if um, you so choose. For example, October 1st was the feast of St. Therese of Lisieux. So you, I posted on our website, um, on the chaplet page, you know, the feast of the day. So I'm gonna be doing that as well. I didn't update for today, I should have, but I put a, should have put St. Francis on there today. And then on the chaplet page tomorrow, you'll see St. You'll see um, Saint Faustina on there. Um, and so here's the multitude of different ways we can um, honor and ask for the intercession of St. Faustina. I'm going to show you all of them. So this is fun. You guys get a two for one this time. So there are two chaplets in this prayer sheet, two chaplets. There's one niner chaplet for St. Faustina, and then there is the chaplet of divine mercy, which is actually not the rosary. Now, that's snowball. Now, you can use a rosary, and so that's what we'll be praying tonight. We haven't done it in so long. We used to pray at 3 p.m. every day um, at Holy Rosary uh, when COVID shut everything down. We were praying online at 3 p.m. every day, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Um, Ethan, you're going to have to type, sweetie pie. Um, and so today, we are also going to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Um even though it's a, a longer chaplet bead-wise, the prayers are very brief and very beautiful. And I thought worthy of praying again together as a group. Amen? Amen. So we'll be praying the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, but if you ever want to keep in your pocket a Chaplet of St. Faustina, the Niner, then the prayers for that are on here as well. So you get two, you get her biography, and then you get two versions of a chaplet. I'm sorry, that's backwards. And how to pray the chaplet of divine mercy. So very, very, very fun. This was a fun one. Hi, Annette. Yes, thank you um, for adding Jackie on there. Please continue to add your intentions to the comments so that we can lift those up when we begin praying. So let me just show you what we've got here. Here is one of the Niners. Now that's got an image of St. Faustina right there with the red, blue, and white of the Divine Mercy, which is on the back of that medal. So this is her Niner and you can keep that in your pockets, pocket size. Um, here is the Niner with tiny St. Faustina. Tiny Saint, there you go. She's holding the image of the Divine Mercy. I think that's so cute. If you can see that, she's got her little image of the Divine Mercy. And again, the red, blue, and white. Beautiful wooden cruci crucifix cross. 
Now, here's what I'm excited to show you all tonight, that, that it is possible to have in your possession a chaplet that's not a rosary. Now, it looks almost exactly the same as your rosary, but there's one bead missing. You don't need that first Our Father bead, and so you have all of the decades, just like in a rosary, centerpiece, but then you only have one bead and three beads and a middle. There you go. See, so that's the chaplet of divine mercy that's just the chaplet. Now, of course, of course, just have your rosary out to pray the chaplet of divine mercy, but it's so nice to, I didn't even know, I, I think it was last year that I discovered that you could build a chaplet of divine mercy that was specifically a chaplet of divine mercy. Now this one just has the metal. This one does still have the crucifix and the metal. And so you can just have them made any which way you want them, you know? See that the crucifix with a beautiful divine mercy centerpiece. So, so many different ways. And um, we can make them any way you want. <laughs> so we can even make a rosary with a divine mercy centerpiece, whatever, whatever you want. So anyways, we're going to be praying the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, but first let's talk about St. Faustina. Um, Johnny, you can get your homework but and eat your dinner, okay? So we talked about St. Faustina at Youth Night this past Wednesday because her feast day was upcoming and her feast day is tomorrow. So let's talk about this beautiful young girl who knew at the age of seven that she wanted to belong to Jesus, that she wanted to be only his, that she wanted to join him in a religious order and be married to him in that way. Um, she was born in 1905, August 25th, 1905 in Poland. And I love that because she's from the same country as John Paul II, another favorite saint. We'll be doing him in a couple of weeks. She's the third of 10 children. So up, up there, um, in age, so one of the older ones. Um, and again, she wanted to be a sister from a very young age and she loved the Blessed Sacrament. And she loved her Catholic faith. Uh, so she wanted to join a convent as soon as she finished school. But at 16, she needed to help her parents pay the bills and feed the family. So she became a housekeeper. Um, in 1924, so she was 19 years old, she experienced her first vision of Jesus who came to her and spoke to her. Um, and so Jesus told her that he wanted her to be a sister as well, that he wanted her to join a convent. And she was 19 years old, three years she'd been supporting, helping to support her family. Um, and so she packed her bags and she left for Warsaw. That's where Jesus told her to go, go to Warsaw and join a convent. Her family let her leave. She went she was trying to be obedient. She went to convent after convent after convent after convent, and they all rejected her, mostly because of her appearance. So interesting that, you know, early in the church, you know, the church even today is still full of human beings, human beings who make mistakes, who cast judgments, who make the wrong choice. And um, she was rejected from all those convents. And now I think, man, how many of those convents are wishing that they had accepted sis, um, uh, little Maria Faustina into the fold because now she's a saint, you know? And so eventually she was allowed to join, get this, I love this. She was allowed to join the congregation of the sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. So interesting how mercy follows her throughout her life. Um, she had begun to have visions, but not quite the vision that we all know about. But she was already belonging to the Congregation of Mercy. I love that. Now, they told her she could join on one condition, that she pay for her habit herself. I don't think they made everyone do that, but they wanted to, her to prove that she was determined, dedicated, that she was willing to um, uh, sacrifice and, and, and that she was serious about this decision. And so again, she took a job as a housekeeper in Warsaw so that she could um, pay for this habit. She was saving her money. She was making payments to, it's okay, David. She was making payments to, um, it was intentional, that she was making payments to the convent so that she could pay for her habit. And 
Eventually, she received her habit in 1926 at 20 years old. Um, she took the religious name at that point of Sister Maria Faustina of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, I should have told you that her 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 birth name was Helena. Helena, and there's a Saint Helena, so I love that. Helena Kowalska was her um, birth name. Um, and so she took the name Sister Maria Faustina of the Blessed Sacrament. In 1928, she took her first vows. Now, I love that about religious orders. Um, it's not a once and done. It's this progression of vows. And so you are constantly discerning uh, and, and continuing to pray about this vocation because it's so permanent and so so beautiful and so serious. And sometimes, you know, I know married couples are so excited to get married and they want to get married, but we don't even spend that much time preparing for wedding vows, you know, seven years, sometimes six to six to eight years preparing. They want them to be sure because once you become a sister or a priest, you shouldn't be leaving that vocation. It's just as serious as marriage and it should be the vocation that you keep for the rest of your life. So that's why they take, they have them pray about it for a very long time and take um, temporary vows and then permanent vows. And the permanent vows is just like a wedding. It's a big deal. It's a big celebration. All right, so now we come to, that was in 1926. Fast forward to 1931. And this is when she has the vision of the King of Divine Mercy. The vision that we all know, the Divine Mercy image. Um, oh, I left it over there. But I think that, is it on this prayer sheet? I didn't even put a picture of the Divine Mercy. Ethan, over there, there's those prayer cards. Oh, no, you just got... Johnny, turn around over there. There's the prayer cards. Can you get me the Divine Mercy prayer cards? Um, and so we all know that, that image. And one hand raised in blessing, the other touching the garment at his breast. From the opening of the breast, there comes two large rays, one red and the other pale, on the left side with all those cards. Um, do you see all those saint cards? No, Jay? saint cards on the table there's a pile of saint cards on the table yeah just bring me the pile okay so she says this in silence i gazed intently at the lord my soul this is it he got it this is the divine mercy image that we know and love there we go so you see the rays coming out, and these are his graces upon us. Um, yeah, I know she's holding it on the second page, but I wanted a big, thank you, Sharon. I just knew I had it. I was like, I didn't even put a big image of the Divine Mercy. There's just the little images of her holding it. It's on the first page, too. Um, <laughs> I just was thinking, look, it's on the first page, too. It's there. It's just itty bitty. Okay. Um, and so this is what she writes in her diary. And again, I, I didn't even mention this at the beginning, but this is why we know so much about her because she kept diaries just like, just like Therese of Lisieux. And I love that. She says, I gazed intently at the Lord. My soul was overwhelmed with fear, but also with great joy. After a while, Jesus said to me, paint an image according to the pattern you see with the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you. Okay, Jesus looked at her directly and said, paint this image okay and saint faustina or maria sister maria faustina in her mind goes but i can't paint <laughs> and i love it for three years she tried to she asked for help from other sisters who lived with her family members she asked someone please paint this image and she could not find anyone to do it adequately and I think that that's interesting. She was so determined to be obedient to our Lord, but she couldn't paint it herself. Has anybody, have you boys ever tried to draw something and in your mind it's perfect? It's so perfect. You're like, this is what it's going to look like when I draw it. And then it gets on the paper and you're like, what? That is not what was in my head. And so can you imagine the frustration for three years? Jesus asked her to paint this painting to paint this and she's like i can't make it look how i saw him i can't make it look how it's in my mind and my heart um well this is great so she had recently um she had recently 
received a new confessor. She had recently received a new spiritual director. And when she, you know, when you meet a new spiritual director or confessor, you need to tell them everything that's been going on in your life. And she shared with him the visions. Now, his, this, his name is Father Michael Sapaco. And um, we know him because uh, he recorded some of this as well and he had her start recording after he had her checked out by a psychiatrist. So I think that that's beautiful. The reality of humanity was kind of like, ooh, what did I just get in this new sister? You know, what, what's she dealing with? Is this real? Is this true? Is she an attention seeker? Is she um, telling lies? You know, what is this about? And so she had, she was checked out by all the psychiatrists, passed all the tests, and, and that convinced Father Michael that she was being truthful, that she was sharing truth, that she had seen Jesus. Um, and so at that point, he had her start writing in a diary. And also, he introduced her to an artist, Eugene Kazimierowski. I don't know how to say that. And it was 1934 that the first image of Jesus, the Divine Mercy, the King of Divine Mercy, was painted. And that's how long it took. That's the dedication that she had. That's the patience that she had. Um, and so I love that because of her spiritual director, we have that image. We also have her diaries and you can still access her diaries. You could still buy them on Amazon um, and you can read exactly what she saw, exactly what she experienced, exactly what she witnessed. Um, and she was still, still so determined to draw everyone into relationship with this image of Jesus, with this divine mercy image. She wanted to start a new congregation but again, we talked about religious orders. She had taken her permanent vows with the Sisters of Mercy. That was her permanent home. And so she needed to respect that, the vows. And Jesus told her, he said, um, I will fill what he, she was upset that she couldn't do everything he was asking of her. And he said, don't worry, my daughter, I will fill where you're lacking. So you do everything you can to share about my divine mercy, but I will fill up the lacking parts. And I think we need to remember that as well. If God asks you to do something and you feel um, incapable, you feel unworthy, you feel unable, um, do what you can do. Do to the best of your ability. And then God fills in the rest. It's like the perfect math problem. There will never be a remainder. There will never be, you know, leftovers. God will, God will totally fulfill through you, what he's asking you to do. He will never leave you high and dry. He will never leave you unable to fulfill the task that he's asked you to fulfill. So that's what he promised us through St. Faustina. You can read these promises in her diaries and you can read more than this too. So dive into those diaries, dive into um, the promises, the actual words of Christ coming to us through St. Faustina. Um, and, and, be comforted by that. Be filled up by that. Be be perfected by that, uh, and 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 uh, be inspired by that. Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent, but um, it's just amazing to have the words of Christ, other than scriptures, but to have the words of Christ given to um, a young, beautiful servant, and then given to us. Uh, so I think that we shouldn't take that for granted. One of the things that she also said, and it's here on this paper, and I love this quote, know that the greatest obstacles to holiness are discouragement and an exaggerated anxiety. These will deprive you of the ability to practice virtue. And I think you need to dive into that whole, that whole premise. And, and you can't just take a quote and be like, I mean, it's inspiring, but read where she talks about that, you know? because it can be easy to get discouraged and it can be easy to be anxious, but you can't just turn it off like that. So dive into those messages um, in her diary and in her writings and be inspired by it. Be hope filled with hope and encouraged. All right, so there's a, so much more about, about St. Faustina here, but I wanna enter into prayer and I want to lift up all of your intentions. So make sure you put your intentions into the comments so that we can lift them up tonight as we pray the chaplet of divine mercy and again the prayers for her niner chaplet are also here on the prayer sheet so you can do that on your own you can do that after the chaplet of divine mercy if you'd like 
There's a beautiful, beautiful extra prayer here by the Trinity that I couldn't leave out. I mean, for the Trinity, prayer to the Trinity. It's incredible. And so uh, you can add that to the end of either chaplet. You can pray it daily. You can pray it tonight and never again. It's up to you. All right. So if you don't have a chaplet of divine mercy that's specifically a chaplet of divine mercy, you can grab your rosary, of course, which is what we've always prayed the chaplet of divine mercy on. So go ahead and grab, grab your rosary. Oh my gosh, Megan. <laughs> that was not even on purpose. Oh gosh, now you got me distracted. That's hilarious. My braids are divine mercy theme. <laughs> the, the pale red and the pale blue. Okay, that's hilarious. All right. I have to focus. I'm going to be like staring at my own braids this whole time. So if you haven't already, put your intentions into the comments. Go ahead and do that now. I'm going to scroll back up to the top and I'm going to go ahead and lift up all of your intentions as well as each one of you that's here tonight and all of your family members that are either in your home or maybe moved out of the home already. Um, sons and daughters, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, parents, um, so we'll be lifting up each of them. Boys, I want you guys to think about um, something you would like to pray for as well, something or someone, and then I'll ask you after I go through all of these intentions. You know what you want to pray for, Jonathan? BJ. You want to pray for Uncle BJ? Oh, that's my brother. He's in Alaska, stationed in Alaska with the Air Force. So um, Jonathan would like to pray for my brother BJ. That's awesome. Thanks, Johnny. Um... Okay, so we pray for safe travels for Bernadette. We pray in Thanksgiving for her granddaughter who just got married, and we pray for the entire family as they um, lift up the granddaughter and, and as they continue to encourage her and her new husband. Laura would like to pray for a friend of her mother. Her daughter died two days ago. I'm so sorry. So we lift up that whole family and the sadness that they are in that they are um, currently going through. Claudia would like to lift up Jackie Becerra. Bernadette would like to pray for safe travels back to Texas for the entire family. Claudia would like to lift up Lionel. We continue to pray for him and the colon cancer that he is fighting. Jody would like to lift up David Estimbo, Abby and Gabby Zuniga. Debbie would like to pray for her daughter's delivery goes well Tuesday morning without complications. So new life is coming into the world as well. Lenora would like to pray for a dear, dear friend, TR, who's very sick and praying for everyone fighting cancer. I'd like to add uh, my friends, Randy and Rachel, who are fighting cancer. Sharon would like to lift up Jim Franklin, who started his chemo today, that the treatment works well for him, that he stays positive through it all. Please also pray for the strength of his family and close friends. David, be thinking about an intention, okay? We lift up Sharon's personal intentions. Lenora would like to pray for her daughter's grandchildren, her daughters and her grandchildren, all deacons, Father Oren, and for her sisters that they may walk without pain. Dolores would like to pray for a friend who passed away last week and all those who are um, dealing with grief over that that loss. Sharon would like to pray for Brandon Warren and his family. Lenora would like to lift up Deacon Charlie. Um, may God bless him on his birthday today and all of his future birthdays. Sharon would like to pray for the healing of Herb. We love Herb. Claudia would like to lift up personal intentions for your husband. Claudia, we continue to pray for your husband and for your kids. Lenora would like to lift up Brandon Warren as well. Mary Olga would like to pray for her friend that chemo, chemo treatments are successful. Elena would like to lift up personal intentions. Frances would like to lift up all her families and friends. Megan would like to lift up Leanne and all of her intentions. Elsa would like to lift up Oswaldo Torones. 
Mike would like to ask for healing and also for Laura's dad, who's in PT rehab. Megan would like to lift up all of Deacon Charlie's intentions on his birthday. Sharon would like to pray for the soul of Cousin Dennis, who will be buried tomorrow, and for his family. Kara would like to lift up her friends and their families, also all of their intentions. Kara would like to lift up the intentions of Father Oren, Deacon Charlie, and Deacon Jason, as well as the intentions of all of our wonderful seminarian friends, Carlos and Hi, Christian and Marlon. We are praying for you as you continue to discern your vocation. All right, Jonathan lifted up Uncle BJ, lift up my dad who is um, in and out of vertigo sickness and pray for my mom who cares for him. Ethan, did you think of an intention? No? David, did you think of an intention? He would like to pray that he does well on his quiz tomorrow. So we pray for everyone who is um, every student who is having tests or quizzes this week, any kind of stress that that brings them. Bern Bienvenida would like to pray for the healing of her granddaughter. Sharon would like to pray for safety from COVID and for an end to COVID. Amen. Amen. We lift up Elsa and Javier as they continue to navigate this world without their beautiful son, Leo. And Leo, we ask for your intercession tonight. We ask for you to pray for us. Oh, Lenora, yes. I, I miss my mom, too. I want them to be here one night and pray the chaplet with us. That would be amazing. All right, so many of you know how to pray the chaplet of divine mercy. If you don't, it's not difficult. The prayers are very short. They can be found on this back page. Um, and so we will be praying in honor of the wounds of Christ tonight. And we were, will be praying in thanksgiving for God's mercy, but also praying for his mercy. Mercy upon each one of us um, as we grow, as we become the best version of ourselves, and as we become more and more like Christ. So we lift up all of your intentions, and I lift up each one of you as well. And David, uh, no, you gave me an intention. Ethan, if you think of one, you can name it any time, okay? Okay. Yes, Johnny. Oh. Oh. Johnny would like to pray for our older pets who are potentially nearing the end of their lives. And we, so we, I mean, I'm not, I'm sorry, Ethan. I just Ethan, meant Mom. we pray that they're, you know, that they love living here and that we take good care of them and we love them and that they never die, Ethan. That was rude. I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so we are going to close our eyes and take a deep breath as we enter into a spirit of prayer. As we remember that Jesus told us where two or more are gathered in prayer, there am I. And we are all gathered together, so Christ is sitting right next to you as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, and we all say, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. And then one more time, O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. On these first three beads, we pray, Our Father, Hail Mary, and the Creed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the creed, 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. On this first Our Father bead, we pray in honor of the wound in Christ's left foot. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. In honor of the wound in Christ's right foot. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. In honor of the wound in Christ's left hand. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. In honor of the wound in Christ's right hand. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. In honor of the wound in Christ's side. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Jonathan, Jonathan, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Now we repeat together three times on the centerpiece. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We haven't done that together as a group in so long. It was so nice to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy with you. At another time, we'll pray the Chaplet of St. Faustina. But you can go ahead and pray that tonight if you'd like to go to bed praying that. Um, and the video of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy will be up later this week so that you can pray with us anytime, as well as the Chaplet of St. Faustina. God bless you all. I love pr praying with all of you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for praying with me and the boys. Please keep us in your prayers. Keep them and all students in your prayers especially all kids um, in schools, in person. And next week, we have a special treat, might have a special guest. Um, we will be praying the chaplet of St. Damien of Molokai, patron saint of lepers and leprosy. And so join us next week where I am praying we have our special guest, that it works. Um, yes, on Facebook Live. Hopefully I can join him to the prayer. We'll see. We'll see. Um, God bless you all. I keep you in my prayers and I love praying with you guys, my, my online family. God bless you all. Sleep with the angels and rise with the saints. God bless you.